The title of this message is Making Sense of Our Pain. Making Sense of Our Pain. Now, pain can be a lot of, it's a lot of different categories. There can be physical pain. There can be mental pain. There can be emotional pain. You know, a lot of things could fit into that category of anxiety, frustrations, confusion. You might, you know, describe them as pain. So, making sense of our pain. Someone said that God is very sensitive to our pain. Now, sometimes you'd have to disagree with that. <laughs> you know, you'd just have to say, I'm not sure he is. Um, I think of Jeff Hall, you know, at the Pentecost. He was anointed because of his leg. And, you know, I, we prayed over him. And then at the end of the service, I said, How, how's, your, how's your leg? And he said, no, it's still, still hurting. And so I made it a point. For the next couple of weeks, it seems like, I was praying continuously for Jeff Hall. I mean, three or four times a day, you know, make him better, heal his, heal his leg or whatever. And then I think last Sabbath, Cord said that uh, he's still in pain. And it just, it gets frustrating sometimes. I know, uh, you know, God is very sensitive to our pain. And again, sometimes we'd have to disagree with that. I know Ansel's four-wheeler accident. How, how long did you experience pain as far as your leg? Because they told you... Yeah, I was 18 months on crutches. Right. During that time, if I tried to put any weight on it, it was really painful. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it was pretty much, yeah. Yeah. So, and, and they told you what? You'd be on crutches? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, 18 months, that, that's a long time. And we really do sometimes begin to question certain issues. Making sense of our pain. Jeremiah 15 and verse 18. Let's look at that. Jeremiah 15 and verse 18. There's a, a statement here that it's almost as if a guy who is, Jeremiah has gotten fed up with something going on in his life. Why is my pain perpetual and my wound incurable, which refuses to be, refuses to be healed? Will you... Will thou be altogether unto me as a liar, as a water that fails? You know, you, you read that and you realize, okay, here's a person going through a lot. Maybe he's hurting. Maybe he's suffering. Not sure. He's, he's confused. Not sure why he's going through whatever he's going through. And he is crying out to God in brutal honesty. And that's always good advice. You know, just brutal you know, don't worry about God's going to strike you dead or anything like that. Just, God, this is how I feel. This is how I think. This is what I'm going through, you know. Now, it's true that pain, suffering, and hardship is a part of life. And I tell you, it's a part of life I don't like. Uh, <laughs> but if you read it, I mean, consider Genesis 3 and verse 16. Let, let's take a look. I mean, right there at the get-go, right off out of the chute. <laughs> Here's what you got to get used to. Genesis 3, verse 16. And to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrows and thy conception. In sorrow you shall bring forth children, and thy desire shall be unto your husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam, he said, Because you have hearkened to the voice of your wife, and has eaten of the tree which I commanded thee, saying, You shall not eat of it, curse it is the ground for your sake. You know, you can, you can, basically you can just say, yeah, yeah, I know what he's talking about. Amen to that, because, I mean, I, we've got three fruit trees, and I'm telling you, I, I doubt it's a pear, it's a peach, and it's an apple tree, and I can almost bet money right now that I'm not going to get one pear, no peaches, I, I, they're all gone, uh, and apples, they'll rot on the tree, you know. So, no, I mean, I, what do you got to do to keep this stuff going? You know, and I, I talked to a guy at the feast, and he said, he was talking about fruit trees, and he said, you just, he said, you wouldn't believe the work that a vineyard does on these trees with the sprays, the chemicals, to keep these things, you know, going, and so that they will bear fruit. And of course, we've got about 100,000 squirrels, too, that <laughs> well, I feed the birds a lot, but I'm feeding the squirrels. They are hanging upside down on my feeders. I can put a shield over top the feeder. It doesn't do a bit of good. I mean, they're like gymnastic class or something. I mean, they cut a flip and flip over and get in. It's unreal. But uh, anyway, it says, uh, you shall not eat of it. 
Cursed is the ground for your sake. In sorrow you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and you shall eat the herbs of the field. In the sweat of your face shall you eat bread till you return into the ground. For out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and dust you shall return. So when they sinned, he decreed they would endure pain, suffering, hardship, and eventually death. But you know, knowing this doesn't make our pain any better. <laughs> That's just the way it is, okay? But it doesn't make our pain any better to endure or suffer through. Now, there's something I was trying recently, and I thought, okay, God, your will be done. Now, there's a perverse comfort in that. Let me explain. You know, it's like, okay, whatever happens, happens. And, and there was a certain amount of, of comfort in saying, Thy will be done, Lord. Certain amount of comfort. I mean, what can be better than God's will? That's the comfort I was trying to take. If it's God's will, that's as good as it gets, right? But then I considered, if this pain, this suffering, this hardship is just God's will, this is a hard God to worship. It's a hard God to worship. Have you ever noticed that you have to feel good to worship God? I mean, I think so. You know, if you don't feel good, the smell of a flower, not much to it. A sunset, oh yeah, it's beautiful. But you can't, you can't enjoy it like you're supposed to. Good food, yeah, it's, 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 it's good. But you, if you don't feel good, Every, a lot hinges on, you know, good things don't mean that much to you if you feel bad. So it's, it's even worship, you know, the worship of God, it's hard to do it when you feel bad. It's hard to worship God. It's, it's even hard uh, for me to get close to God if you're not feeling good. And then I started thinking about this. Saying, okay, well, God, your will be done. And then I started thinking about a little verse where Jesus said, if you, this is Matthew 7 and verse 11, if you being evil, and I love that expression, you know, if you being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? So I got to thinking about this. Okay, Lord, your will be done. Now, if, if my daughter, if our daughter was going through hardship, pain, and suffering, I would do everything in my power to alleviate her suffering, especially if I had the power to do it. Everything. There would be no limits here. So when it comes to making sense of our pain, I think this can be a trump card for you. This is not like you, Lord. I'm evil, and this is what I would do if it was my child. Okay. I think, I think, you know, I don't want to say you can hold God's feet to the fire or anything like that, but you can use this as a, as a trump card. You know, this is what I'm like. I'm classified as evil, and I would do this good thing. So that's a trump card. All right. Another point is pain can be used to stop you and get you to go in a, in a different direction. Pain can be used to stop you and get you to do a complete 180 in the other direction. I think of Paul. Saul, originally, you know, and uh, he was, a blinding light came out of heaven. He was blinded for three days and three nights. What do you think he suffered? I mean, do you think he, that was painful? It had to be. Can't see. Had to have someone to lead him by the hand everywhere he went. What do you think he thought about during those three days and three nights? And all of it was for the purpose of totally turning Paul around, a complete 180. Um, so pain can be used to stop you and get you to go in another direction. And often, I think, for us, you know what you need to do, but you're not doing it. Uh, you know the decision you need to make, but you're not making it. Some, maybe something that has weighed on you for years. And you've thought about it, and you've dwelt over it, and you said, yeah, I mean, this, this, I, I know this is what I need to do. I know this is the direction I'm, I need to go, but you just don't do it. Haven't done it yet. And I love this verse, Acts 9 and verse 6. And he trembling, talking about Saul, 
and astonished said, Lord, what will you have me to do? Now that's powerful. That's powerful. So again, pain can be used to stop you and get you to go in another direction. Another thing about making sense of our pain is that, and this one's going to be hard, hard to wrap your mind around. It was a sermon I heard at the feast many years ago entitled, God is good all the time. God is now, you're going <laughs> to, depending on what you're going through, <laughs> you're going to, you're going to, you know, you're going to, ah, I don't know about that. <laughs> That's hard to believe when you're in pain. God is good all the time. Is it not? I mean, it's hard to believe that. Uh, someone said, God always ends with all is well. If all is not well, it simply means it's not the end. Joel Olstein. Let's quote from him. <laughs> God is not limited by your situation, your pain. He is limited by what you believe. Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. That's, that's Mark 9 and verse 23. All things are possible to him that believes. If you can believe, part of that belief, and it's tough, is believing that God is good all the time. It's going to be a struggle. It's going to be a challenge. But I think it's, there's a power in that, that statement. Next point is that making sense of our pain, getting free from pain can be a joint effort. You know, so often we just say, God, take this away, take this away, take this away, and, and nothing's happening. All right, he may want us to be involved in this also. In fact, I'm, I'm quite sure that's probably true. In Luke 11 and verse 9, And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks receives, and he that seeks findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be open. And of course that, if you just keep reading on a little bit further, it goes to that area where it says, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children. You know, so, but the need to, it's a joint effort, you and God, to seek, to search, to look, to never give up. I know Angela with her knee mentioned she had meniscus removed. So that's basically bone on bone, is it not? Okay. She said that one of the greatest things that helped was acupuncture. Now, you know, normally you think, well, they, I don't even know if she believed in that before. A person sticking needles in you all over the place in some strange places, you know, and, and lying there for, for a half hour. But it was the biggest thing that seemed to help. So, you know, I just think sometimes that we give up way too easily. And... Uh, I know I have something called pulsating tinnitus. Uh, you know, it's can ring in my head, connected to my heart. And uh, I've gotten on uh, YouTube, and I, I've found people that said they've cured this, and this is how they did it. A very usual chiropractic adjustment on the neck, and, and of course, no one does that around here. You have to go to North Carolina to get this adjustment. So, but I haven't, I haven't followed through with none of this, but. You know, are we seeking? Are we asking? Are we looking? Are we searching? You know, making sense of our pain, being free from pain, can be a joint effort with God, a team, a teamwork, where you work together. Another point about making sense of our pain, and this is a good question, does this pain glorify God? Does this pain glorify God? And in John 17 and verse 4, you don't have to turn there, but said, Jesus said, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which you gave me to do. And now, O Father, glorify me with, the, with your own self, with the glory which I had before the world was. Now, it's hard to handle, but for Christ, the glorifying of the Father would involve suffering. Okay? I mean, it just, it just would. I mean, it just part of what the Father wanted. Part of the Father's plan, part of our salvation to be, uh, to be forgiven, involved Christ's suffering. That was one of the ways he glorified the Father. Now, I know, we all know, that God can use the pain to mold us, to shape us, to change us. In other words, to glorify God. 
All you got to do is read the story of Job on that one, which is, again, a disturbing book. But it can be used, our pain can be used to mold, to shape us, to change us. And what we learn from Job is that there is a time element involved, that there, it wasn't forever, that it, there was, there's a time element where God was, you know, allowed this to happen. But here's my point. If your pain is futile, does not glorify God, then you need to take your request to God and say, God, what is this? Why am I going through this? How does this glorify you at all? If it's just futile, doesn't mean anything. You need to, you need to take your argument with, to God. And, and, and again, to uh, does this pain, and, and show me if it does, how does it glorify you, Father, what I'm going through? Now, I want to conclude with maybe a key to answered prayer. Maybe a key to answered prayer. It's in John 14, verse 13. John 14, and verse 13. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Now notice that. Whatsoever. I am, I, I, this includes everything. You ask in my name, that will I do, that, and there's a reason for it, that the Father may be glorified. So whatever you're going through, physical pain, mental pain, emotional pain, the question you want to ask, does this pain glorify you, Father? And if not, please take it away.